Hello to all, welcome back to the channel Cloud Knowledge. This video is continuation of the previous video where we have created NoSQL Cosmos DB account. We have created the account in the previous video through Azure portal and in this video we will be creating the database container items. That means we will be creating a simple document and we will try to retrieve the data from the NoSQL Cosmos DB account. Let's go to the portal. Here in the portal, you can see that this was the account Cosmos NoSQL uh, API account which we have created and now we have to create the container and the items. So in order to create the database container and items, we have to understand the object model of Cosmos DB. So let's go to the object model. So here is the link and it comes under the Azure Cosmos DB documentation under the NoSQL Quick Starts first section where we have the object model. Before we start building the application, we have to look at the hierarchy of the resources of the Cosmos DB. It has a specified object model that is used to create and access the resources. Azure Cosmos DB, it creates the resources in hierarchy that consists of accounts, databases, containers and items. This is very important. We have to un understand that first in the hierarchy, the first level is for the account that is the database account. Next comes the databases. Okay. Under that database, we can have multiple containers and inside those containers, we can have different items. Okay. This is the object model. Now we'll demonstrate this using the portal. Let's go to the portal. We can create the database container items through data explorer. We can directly use this icon here to go to the data explorer or from the left pane we can go to the data explorer section so let's click on it okay so we have clicked and it will show us the first page as welcome to azure cosmos db so this will be the welcome page at the data explorer section of the cosmos db so our step as per the object model is to create the new container so in order to create the new container, we have this icon shown to create the new container. But as per the object model, we have a database above the level of container, just above the level of container. So we'll click on new container. As soon as we click on new container, a right panel will appear here where we have to configure the database ID. Okay. So we have if we have an existing database ID, we can use the same, but this is a fresh NoSQL Cosmos DB account. So we'll create a new database ID here. So let's say new DB for NoSQL. Okay. This is our new database. Then this is checked share throughput across containers. This is throughput is configured at the database level will be shared across all containers within the database. So within this, this database, the throughput will be shared to all the containers because as per the model within this database, you, you could have multiple containers. So the throughput will be shared across the containers. Next is database throughput auto scale. So here we have the throughput set throughput that is the request units required for the workload. A read of a 1 KB document uses 1 RU, 1 request unit. Select manual if you plan to scale RUs yourself. Select auto scale to allow the system to scale the RUs based on usage. So in this case, we will make it to manual. Let's click manual. If you are interested, these settings which we are configuring, we can also see through the section in the documentation standard documentation here create resources azure portal so if you open this link create resources azure portal it will take you to how to create the account and then how to add a database and a container and the significance of the database id throughput container id partition key everything is mentioned here now we'll go back and we'll set it to manual Estimate your RUs. So we'll leave it the default value as 400. Then comes the container ID. ID. Unique identifier for the container and 
used for ID-based routing through REST and SDKs. So let's name our container as container only. Then comes indexing, automatic or off. All the properties in your documents will be indexed by default for flexible and efficient queries. So we'll leave it automatic. Next comes the partition key. Partition key is used to automatically distribute data across the partitions for scalability. Choose a property in your JSON document that has a wide range of values and evenly distributes request volume. For small, read-heavy workloads or write-heavy workloads of any size, ID is often a good choice. For this demo purpose, the JSON which we are going to use is here. Okay, the item one of the JSON is this and item two of the JSON is this. Okay, item one, item two. Okay, there we have ID, category, name, description is complete of a flag value. Similarly, we have another item. Okay, so we'll go back here and in our case, for it is written, the partition key should be selected in such a way that it has a wide range of values and evenly distributes request volume. We could either select ID because it's unique or the category. So here we have two different categories. We could choose category here in this case for demo. So let's select category. OK, so we have selected the partition key. Next, we will click OK. Let's wait for it to process. So here, upon processing, you can see under the data tab, we have the database created. Okay. New DB no SQL. So this is our database. And inside this database, we could create new containers, different containers, because the object models says that Within the account, you could have multiple databases and database could have multiple containers. Okay, so here is the database and we have the container created here. So we named the container as container only. So that's why it is displaying as container. And if you click here, you can create here the SQL queries, stored procedures, triggers, etc. So when the container is created, we could see here items. Okay. If you click on items on the right panel, you can see that it will show you ID and here the partition key, which we have selected as category. So since here we do not have any items, it is showing us no item. Okay. So now our job is to create item or upload item. On the top, you can see there are two options, new item as well as upload item. We will explore both the options. So the first option is new item. So we'll click on plus new item. Let's click on plus new item. As soon as you click it, it will create a structure of the JSON. Okay. Where it will have ID. Replace it with the document ID it says. So this is the structure of the default document with which is created as soon as we click on new item. Since we have the JSON document, sample JSON document, we'll copy this item one, okay, and we'll try to paste here as item one. That is our first item. As soon as we paste it, you have to click on save so that it will show up here, okay? It will not show up until you save this document. So click on save so you can see it is processing. And as soon as you clicked on save, it will show up here. The ID is one and category is personal. Okay. ID one category is personal. And you can see that the document contained ID category name description is complete flag. Okay. Only five inputs were there. And you can see here along with that, we have these three, four, five, five extra values created. These values are our ID, self, e tag, attachments, and TS. If you go Back to the official documentation page of Cosmos DB here of the object model and further go down. We have for more information about the hierarchy of resources, see working with databases and containers or items. So if we open this hyperlink, it will take us to the concepts. Okay. Under the same documentation, under NoSQL concepts, we have Azure Cosmos DB resource model. In the resource model, we have 
the hierarchy is set here as well as if we browse down here it will show us the properties of the azure cosmos db container okay so these are the properties system defined properties along with the document which we have uploaded system defined properties are created where it is mentioned that rid is system generated okay it is present in the api for no sql as unique identifier of the container okay so rid is the unique identifier which is created for the container then self self here is the addressable uri of the container so self is created e tag e tag e tag is entity tag used for optimistic concurrency control ts attachments are any attachments there along with it and ts is the timestamp if we go further down here then we have ts timestamp of the last update of the item so these are the properties of container and as well as the properties of the item so we have properties of the item present here so these ids are system defined property at the container level also they are present and at the item level also unique identifier rid e tag ts self id okay so we have the first item created for the container inside our freshly created database so now we have added one item into this container having id 1 and category as personal now let's add another item let's click on new item in the same way we'll go back to the sample and take another item that is item 2 and we will just paste it here okay next job is to save it once we click on save it will generate those system property values let's click on save now the item is saved and you can see it appearing here right we have now two documents in place so we have explored the option of adding the new item we have another option called upload item so in order to upload item i have already created here item 3.json where i have placed this item 3.json in my local drive and i'll try to import it here so once we click on upload item then it will prompt us to browse to the file which we want to upload select json files so let's browse to the location and we have it placed here item 3.json will click open and upload it's uploaded let's see here let's refresh and we could see here that the item 3 is also added now let's try to query these items so in order to query these items we have by default select star from c query displayed at the top so it will take all the data from this container and display so if we try to edit the filter we can do it here itself or we have another option at the top if you go new new sql query if we want to execute any sql query on top of these items inside the container we can use the sql query from here so let's click on new sql query by default it will show you select star from c from this container display all items so let's execute this query through this button and at the bottom you can see all the items item id 1 2 and 3 shown here okay so all items are displayed over here let's say we are interested only to see the data of id then we can apply the filter using the where clause where container dot id okay here we write it as c dot id so that it will refer to the containers id as equals to let's say 2 okay then we will try to execute this query and see if the container id 2 is displayed through it so yeah we have got the data of the container id item 2 okay so this is how we can fetch the data from the container 
the items through SQL like queries here. So I hope you've got the basic idea of the hierarchy model of NoSQL Cosmos DB API. That is how we create the database. Under the database, we have the containers and the items. Now we can upload the items, create a new item and query them. So thank you for watching the video. Happy learning to all. Bye.